Being able to quickly construct and draw shapes is a vital skill for the product designer. But being able to position the shadows they cast is valuable too. Not only does it help develop a relationship between the shapes, it also helps to bed the shapes onto the page. So we need to start with a light source, and it's helpful to think of this light source as a vertical line. The light direction comes straight from the base of the light source, and you'll see shortly that the light direction could be pointing anywhere. We also have a light angle, and this comes from the top of the light source and crosses the light direction. We can see here how a cube casts a shadow. With the light source to the left of the cube, we can draw the light direction lines from the base of the sides of the cube. These lines are parallel to each other. We then draw the light angle lines from the top of the same lines. These two are parallel to each other. Where the light direction and light angle lines intersect is important. This is because these points mark the edge of the shadow. So I'm joining these points up with each other and to the edges of the shape. This then forms the outline of my cast shadow. It may be that I want my light source in a different position, so I can change my light direction and my light angle, and the same principles apply. My light direction lines are parallel and come from the bottom of the sides of the shape, and my light angle lines are parallel too, and come from the top of the same sides. Again, the points at which they intersect form the edges of the shadow. To demonstrate that the light source can be positioned anywhere in relation to our shapes, I'm drawing my light direction lines again here. This shows the cube with shadows cast from four different light sources. Now the same principles apply to all shapes. I'm drawing a cylinder here and without the square sides I had on my cube, I'm drawing vertical lines down four points on the cylinder. These four lines give me my starting points for my light direction and my light angle. I can then join up my intersection points to recreate the ellipse shape. 
Joining this up to the edges of the cylinder gives me the outline for my cast shadow. With a cone, the light direction and light angle come from a vertical line at the centre of the shape. You'll find that it's good to practice with increasingly complex shapes, and this will demonstrate that the principle is the same throughout. Creating shapes using construction lines and shading really helps your design work to come alive on the page in front of you. These skills are invaluable if you have your client sitting next to you, and this form of communication should be quick. The addition of cast shadows is the addition of extra information. Once again, it's really important to remember that we're not aiming for neatness. We don't want to produce a page of artwork. Our work is all about communication. We're exploring ideas in visual form, we're recording our thoughts so that we can come back and revisit them, and we're communicating to a third party, be it our client or perhaps someone who will be prototyping our designs. I hope this has been a useful video, if it has then please do subscribe. Remember to hit the notifications tab to be the first to hear of the next upload, there's lots more on the way. For a look behind the scenes and to follow my other projects, find me on Instagram at Product Designer Maker. Thanks for watching.